I'm Mary Beth Fueling, dietitian at Children's Hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Today I'd like to take some time to discuss the topic of food allergies and food intolerances. When children are having problems tolerating a food, it is important to clearly identify what the problems are so that the food can be removed from the diet and an appropriate diet can be managed for the child. In the world of pediatric nutrition, our goal is to keep all foods in the diet if possible. Each time a food is removed from the diet, it increases the risk of the child having nutritional problems and nutritional deficiencies. Let's review some commonly asked questions. First, what is the role of the immune system? The role of the immune system in our bodies is to fight off disease and germs. But in the role of food allergy, the child's immune system is overreacting to what is normally a harmless food. This reaction is always to a food protein. Symptoms of a food allergy are itchy hives, eczema, which is dry, itchy skin, asthma, swelling, GI symptoms such as vomiting, bloating, abdominal cramping, and anaphylaxis. And anaphylaxis may be life-threatening. It is important to realize that a food allergy is not considered an insensitivity or a food intolerance. There is no cure for food allergy except strict avoidance, and it does resist the breakdown of heat or acid. And we need to remember that this food allergies can be life-threatening, and you can be allergic to absolutely any food. So what are the most common food allergens? Eight foods make up 90% of the food allergies in the United States. These include milk, wheat, egg, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, shellfish, and fish. But how common are food allergies in children these days? Food allergies affect one in 13 children and nearly 40% of the children in the United States have food allergies and have a severe reaction. 4% of the U.S. population have food allergies, which means 12 million Americans. Some food allergies may persist throughout your life. There is a growing problem with food allergy. In the most recent study, peanut allergies doubled between 1997 and 2001. What is a treatment for food allergy? The known treatment for food allergy is strict avoidance. It is important to be educated and learn how to avoid food allergies in the food that is offered to the patient. Most recent studies show that children may outgrow some of their food allergies between birth and until age of eight. What is a food intolerance? Food intolerance is demonstrated by GI symptoms. These symptoms are bloating, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramping. It is not an immune response. Typically, food intolerance is not life-threatening. In most cases, people with a food intolerance can tolerate small amounts of the offending food. The most classic example of food intolerance is lactose intolerance. In the case of lactose intolerance, the child does not have an enzyme in their GI tract to break down the lactase, lactose that is found in milk products. This enzyme can be substituted by taking a pill to give you lactase so that your body can break down the dairy products, or the child can consume lactase-free dairy products. Also in this case, most children that have lactose intolerance are able to consume small amounts of dairy products, just not large quantities. Every child with a lactose intolerance has a different level of tolerance, meaning some ch children may be able to eat more dairy products than the child, than other children. What is the treatment for food intolerance? This is very important to understand as it may differ depending on the type of food intolerance. 
In some cases, simply decreasing the intake of the food will make the child be able to tolerate small quantities and take away the symptoms they're exper experiencing from the particular food. In other cases, they may need to remove all sources of that food in order to remove the symptoms. Most of the time, small amounts can be reincorporated into the diet once the food is identified. Can children have both a food allergy and a food intolerance? Absolutely, and that's what makes this type of problem so difficult for parents to deal with. It is important to work closely with your physician as well as the experts to help determine which foods should be avoided strictly and which foods can be allowed in small quantities. How are food allergies diagnosed? There are two evidence-based tests that are used by board certified allergists to determine what food allergies are in a child. There's one that is a blood test for serum IgE and the second is skin prick testing. Both are reliable tests that can be used in combination with clinical information and symptoms that are reported when consuming the food to help identify what is a food allergy. As it is very important to work with a board certified physician for determining this type of information. Secondly, are there tests to determine food intolerance? This is more difficult as some intolerance do have tests that can be done by the gastroenterologist. However, a lot of food intolerance is determined simply by trial and error. If there isn't a food that is in question, that food may be removed, the symptoms observed, and if this improves the symptoms, it may be then classified as a food intolerance. What every parent should know. Now I'd like to take some time to make sure that you have crucial information that will help you realize what the next step should be if your child is having problems with food allergies or food intolerance. First, if you remove a food in your child's diet because you think they are not tolerating that food, it is very important to realize that you are increasing the risk for your child to have poor growth or nutritional deficiencies. If you are tempted to remove items from your child's diet, be sure to get assistance from your physician. If you remove food from your child's diet, this also increases stress in the care and the feeding of your child. We want parents to recognize that as the stress increases with feeding, you need to ask for help to help identify what the parameters should be for the child's diet so that over time that stress will be decreased. Thirdly, if a parent is told to remove foods from their child's diet, but they are not given education and information of how to provide a nutritious diet, this as well can increase the stress for feeding. Be sure to request help and recommendations from your physician and ask if there's an opportunity to meet with a dietitian that specializes in food elimination diets. This also will help decrease your stress and help ensure that you have the most current, accurate, and reliable information to make sure that your child's nutritional needs are met. Number four, if food allergies are present, ask for an appointment with a board certified physician or other specialist to make sure that things are clarified so that you're not overtly avoiding something that is not necessary. So number five, if no food allergies are present but you are, your child is having problems with tolerating food and your physician is not taking your concerns seriously, this can be very stressful. Be sure to ask additional questions and if necessary, keep a food diary to help give your physician more information regarding your concerns. It is difficult to work through the differences between food allergy and food intolerance. It's a very gray area. 
Be sure to take time to educate yourself to understand the difference between food allergies and food intolerances so that when you return to visits with your physician, you can clearly define what the problems are that your child is experiencing. With this additional information, this will help them guide you in the next steps for helping to deal with the problems that your child is experiencing. If the recommendation from the physician is to go ahead and avoid the foods in the child's diet, be sure to request information as well as a session with a dietitian. The child should be monitored very closely when you're removing foods from their diet. They may require more frequent visits or may require weight checks to ensure that they continue to grow properly during this process. If the symptoms resolve with the removal of one food or up to multiple foods, it's important to reintroduce those foods after the avoidance. This way we can try to narrow down the list of foods, perhaps from five to one. Oftentimes it may seem that more than one food is causing the problem, but when we reintroduce one food at a time, we can narrow it down to perhaps one or two foods versus several. Also, keep in mind during this trial that if there are other medical problems happening, such as constipation, which can lead to vomiting, be sure to redo the trial because we don't want to assume that the vomiting is only related to the food. In conclusion, if your child is having problems with food allergy or intolerance, you should talk with your physician and if needed, ask to see a specialist such as an allergist or a gastroenterologist. This will help you, as well as your physician, to work through the list of foods to determine which ones are the problem foods. Remember, these foods can change over time. When you meet with the physician, write down each of the foods, the symptoms that you're finding, and the problems that the child is experiencing. If your child is placed on a, an elimination diet of more, one or more foods, it is very important to meet with a dietitian to help with meeting the nutritional needs of your child. For example, if milk is removed from a child's diet, this is impacting their protein, micronutrients, as well as fat intake. The removal of milk in a child's diet can have severe nutritional impact for children, both for their overall growth, as well as the quality of the nutrition that the child is able to consume. Therefore, a meeting with a dietitian should provide you with specific information about substitution, resources, and places to purchase foods that can substitute for those products that have been removed. They also can provide you with a list of recommendations to outline what should be included daily in your child's diet to ensure that you're meeting their calorie, protein, fat, and micronutrient goals on a daily basis. We need your help. We need your financial support. You can visit our website to learn more about our organization. We want you to know more about this. Please tell your friends about it. Please be our champion. We need to spread the word and we're relying on you.